Good morning. And welcome to Community Church. It's wonderful to be with you here this morning. In a few minutes, Reverend Sandy Harriman is going to lead us in congregational prayer. If you have a prayer request that you want to share with the congregation or one that maybe is just private for Reverend Harriman, go ahead and pull out that prayer request card that's in the seat back in front of you. You can fill it out and send it to the center aisle. It'll be picked up right before our prayer time. Also, if you are closest to the wall, we have our friendship pad in the pew. Members and visitors alike, we would just love for you to fill that out, send it down the aisle. A couple things of announcements I want to make. <clears throat> First off, if you are able, we would love for you to stay after worship today and help us take down this one tree and the garland. And if you say, I am not physically able to help, we have some tasks where you can just sit on the pew and wrap up some ornaments. So if you are physically able to help with some of these things, great. We'd love for you to stay and have some pizza with us. If you are a little less mobile, we still have a job for you, so we would love for you to stay after and help us if you can. Also, next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the 18th, we have an estate planning seminar coming up. It's just our way of helping out our community think about things for the future. And we have had quite a response to it on Facebook. We have a lot of people signed up because I think people are realizing we got to start talking about these things. These are important conversations that we need to be having. So if you are interested in being a part of that, it's a free seminar. We're going to have some refreshments. Uh, child care will be available. It's at 530 next Thursday, January 18th. So if you want to come, Wonderful. We have uh, an attorney, Kevin Huss, who will be here. In fact, I got his name from Linda Kari. I'm sure some of you probably remember Linda. Linda used to be a part of our congregation before she moved to the UP, and estate planning was kind of her thing. And I called her and I said, who do you suggest? And she said, oh, Kevin would be amazing. This is his area expertise. He's wonderful. So he's going to come out. He's doing it for free. He's going to help us kind of think about those things for the future. So if you want to be a part of that, we would love for you to come. So those are my announcements. Anything else that we have is in the bulletin. You're welcome to see me after worship, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. In the meantime, we are going to jump right into our worship service, so would you please stand? Would you join our singers as we begin? That boy child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. What shall we call him, child of the manger? What name is given in Bethlehem? That royal child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. His name is Jesus, God ever with us, God given for us in Bethlehem. That boy child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. Gift of the Father to human mother makes him our brother of Bethlehem. child of Mary was born in a stable, a manger his cradle in Bethlehem. Gladly we praise him, love and adore him, give ourselves to him of Bethlehem. by John he did not come for pardon but 
but as the sinless one. and our salvation to die upon the cross. So when the dove descended on him, the Son of Man, the hidden years had ended, the age of grace began. Come Holy Spirit, vows we make. This very day invade us and every bondage break. Come give our lives direction, the gift we covet most. To share the resurrection that leads to Standing for the call to worship. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O oh Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. Keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and with excitement. Lord, remind us that you lead us and guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. Join in the opening prayer. Almighty God, you make all things new in heaven and on earth. I come to you in a new year with new desires and old fears, new decisions and old controversies, new dreams and old weaknesses, Because you are a God of hope, we know that you create all the possibilities of the future. Because you are a God of love, we know that you accept all the mistakes of the past. Because you are the God of our faith, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and praise. We come into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise, and we come to serve and to bless you. Amen. You may be seated. And as you're seated, kids, you can come on up and join me in singing our kids' song. This, this is where children belong. Welcome this part of our worshiping throng. What a God's word, prayer, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. Hi, my friends. Every Sunday, I commit to doing this kid's message and going upstairs. Every Sunday, I promise that I'm gonna do that. What if I just said, eh, I don't feel like it. I just, I don't really wanna do it. I just, I don't feel like it. It's kind of my job. <laughs> what if I just said like, ah, eh, I don't want to. Or like, what if your teacher at school, what if he or she said, you know what, I'm gonna give you guys a pizza party because you read 100 books. And then your teacher said, eh, I don't feel like it. I, just, I don't wanna do that feel like getting you guys a pizza. Would, it, would you lose trust in somebody if they just couldn't stay committed to, to their word, doing the things that they said they were going to do? I, I think I've told this story a few times, and some of you might remember it. Yeah, I think I've told it upstairs, but oh, if, I, if some of you might not have heard it, but when I was about your age, I probably was, I don't know, maybe fourth, fifth, sixth grade, something like that. There was these two girls, Jenny and Leah, and Jenny and Leah were the best of friends, and everybody knew Jenny and Leah were best friends. They went to each other's houses all the time. They sat at lunch together. They played on recess together. They were best friends. Well, Jenny and Leah, they had a little bit of a falling out. They must have, something happened in their friendship, and they were no longer friends. Well, Jenny decided that I could be her new best friend, and so Jenny gave me this necklace, and 
Growing up, so you might know what this necklace is. It was like it was like a heart that was broken, and so then one person would wear one necklace. Do you guys do you, do kids still? Okay, so you all know what I'm talking about. Like I didn't know if that was a thing, but it was kind of a thing when I was a kid. Like. I wear one half of the necklace and she'd wear the other half and then everybody knew we were best friends forever because we wore the necklace. And about a week after she gave me the necklace, she asked for it back because her and Leah decided to be best friends again. And my heart was broken. She promised to be my best friend forever. She gave me the necklace and my heart was broken. And I didn't trust Leah after that or <clears throat> Jenny after that because she broke her promise to me. And you know what? We're kind of like that. We're humans, right? We sometimes break promises and we sometimes don't follow through on commitments. That's kind of like a human thing to do, right? Do we sometimes screw up? Has anyone ever broken a promise to you? Yes. yes. Have, has anyone ever broken a promise to you? Like they promised you something and it didn't happen? Yeah, they don't follow through and give you what they told you. That's very... Yeah. Who? A lot, of people, a lot of people have broken their promises to you. It hurts, doesn't it? Oh, it hurts so bad. And it is normal, right? It's not fun, but we're human and we kind of screw things up. But there is one relationship that never breaks their promise, and that's the relationship that I have with God. Because I know that when God promises to do something, that he's going to do it. He does not break his promises. Here's some things in the Bible, some scriptures I want to tell you. And these are promises that he has given to me and to each one of you. Like in Matthew 11:8, it says, Come to me, all you who are tired and have heavy loads, and I'll give you rest. That's a promise. We know that God will follow through on that. Or in Romans 8:38, it says, There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God for he has for us. God's love is a promise. You are guaranteed God's love. He will never break that promise. Or in John 8, 38, it says, he will forgive our sins. We can trust God. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. These are promises that are guaranteed. People are going to disappoint you. People are going to let you down, but God will never let you down. He will stick to his promises. He won't take away the, the friendship necklace. He's going to be there for me and you whenever we need him. So we're going to head upstairs. We're going to talk about Abraham and the promise that God gave Abraham. So you guys ready? Let's go. And they're off. First scripture reading this morning is from the Old Testament, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 7 and 8. Hear now these words. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong, be bold, for you are the one who will go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them, and you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. The second is from the New Testament of Philippians 4, 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. As for the things that you have learned and received and heard and noticed in me, do them, and the God of peace 
will be with you. Let's stand for our hymns, please. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior, If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on That was beautiful. Our third scripture reading for today comes out of uh, the letter to the Colossians. Uh, verse, or chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdoms, and with gratitude in your hearts, Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right, so here we are, 2024. It's a new year. And what a lot of people like to do in the new year is New Year's resolutions. I don't know about you, I've never been a fan of those. Maybe once or twice I've tried one. It lasts about a week or two, including those people who like to go to the gym. Planet Fitness, I heard, was packed last week. Um, but it's not something that I'm, I'm a big fan of. However, a commitment or making a new commitment, that's what I want to talk about this morning. So we just came off of Advent, a great and joyful season, a season where the coming of Christ, the light into the world, and as we lit the candles this morning, it reminded me of, of the last month and the joy that we experienced. And for many, many, many of us, it was very joyful. And others, it wasn't so much. It's also a season, like others throughout the year, where we lose people who are close to us. My mother, Bobby Hillary, is not here today uh, because she had to travel to Indianapolis for a funeral of a relative. Here in this church this week, um, we had the funeral for Tom Anderson. For those who don't know, Kay was my first grade teacher. Um, and and uh, this coming Saturday, um, a funeral for Dick. And so many people who are close to us have passed away. And it happened to, to me as well over the holiday season. A very, very good friend of mine uh, who I went to high school with and roommated with in college, his dad passed away this week. And many of you may know him. He's a, a lifelong North Muskegon resident of Ken Enders. So I got to go to Ken's funeral. And some funerals are sad. and Some funerals are a celebration of life. And Ken was one of those which was a celebration of life. And there was great scripture and great music. And a couple pastors got up to speak. And um, I wanted to share one of those with you today because of how relevant I felt it was. Um, Ken Enders had shared with the pastor of, of their church the three greatest things that happened to him in his life. And he first listed them in chronological order. And the first was he joined the Marines. The second was he got married. And the third was he gave his heart to Jesus. But he told the pastor that that's how they happened in chronological order. But in an order of importance, he said, number one was my commitment to Christ. Number two was getting married. And number three was being a Marine. And when I heard that, I thought about that and I reflected in my own life and I could say the same thing, similar. I'm not a Marine. But the three greatest things in my life were getting married, having a child, and giving my heart to Jesus. And the same as Ken's, I can change that. Because it was getting married, having kids, and then giving my life to Christ. And I re re reverse that is giving my life to Christ getting married and having children is my priority list. And so I, I have to tell you that I consider myself a lucky one, one of the lucky ones. Before church began, I walked through the church and I did so for a reason. You see, 54 years ago, when I was an infant, I was baptized in the old sanctuary by David Yeo. Thirteen years later, I was confirmed in that same sanctuary by Reverend Denny Bowalda. As a young child, I got to go to Sunday school here and be taught lessons by Diane Tennant and Karen Fesky and Mrs. Proctor. I don't remember her first name. She was a hard one on me. She wouldn't let me get away with anything. And then... After being confirmed as a teenager, I got to be in the youth group here and be taught more lessons, life lessons, by Mr. and Mrs. T, the Tobergans. 
And then in 1991, right here in this sanctuary, I was married to my wife, again, by David Yeo. And so for the first 22 years of my life, I was lucky. I was surrounded by the church, and I was a Christian, right? Well, I, I considered myself a Christian. Baptized, confirmed, youth group, Sunday school, married in the church. I was a Christian. And I thought I was a pretty good guy. I didn't do everything right. But I was better than others. At least, that's how I justified it to myself. So life went on, and in my mid-twenties, I got a, uh, an inquiry or a, 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 an ask from a coworker. hey, there's this Christian conference in uh, Detroit, do you want to go? I said, no, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like me. And he asked a couple more times, and I politely said, no, I'm not interested in that. Well, at the time, uh, I had joined Lake Harbor United Methodist Church over in the Norton Shores area. And a couple of the men from that church said, hey, have you heard about this, this church conference, this Christian conference that's going to have happen over in Detroit? We should go. All right. Well, now I've got multiple people asking me about it, but I still didn't want to go. I really wasn't sure why. So <clears throat> we agreed to go. We said yes to the individual that I worked with. And because he knew I was a Christian, right? I went to church. And over to Detroit we went. Now, this happened in a building that doesn't exist anymore. Many of you may know about it or have been there. It was the Silver Dome. And the Silver Dome held 80,000 people. And this particular conference was for men only. So there's 80,000 men there not to watch the Lions. That'll be later today. But to go to a Christian conference. I had never been at anything like this at all in my life. And I really wasn't sure what I was getting into. So we start singing, and I know some of the songs, so I'm comfortable because I'm a Christian. And I've been to church all my life, and so we're singing church songs. But something weird happened that I'd never seen before. It actually just happened a couple of minutes ago in the sanctuary with two individuals. I saw people raising their hands to the sky when they were singing. I'm like, what are they doing, right? That's not something I'd seen in the Methodist church growing up. Okay, so now I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. And then the song came on, How Great Thou Art. Now, one of my favorite songs, but think about the, the depth of voices of 80,000 men singing How Great Thou Art. You could feel it in your chest. And as I was standing there singing, something strange happened. And I had tears come to my eye. That was embarrassing. Men didn't cry. Why would you cry? You're singing a song. And I looked to my left and I looked to my right, and everybody in the row had tears coming out of their eyes. This is an experience I've never had before. So the conference continues. We have more song that I know, it's great. We have speakers that are talking and um, it's a good time. It's a two day conference and we're on the second day and there's an individual who's speaking who uh, basically at the end of his, his talk was inviting those people who were not Christians to ask Jesus into their lives and to become Christians. Basically an altar call, which I'd heard of, but never experienced before in the Methodist church. And I thought to myself, isn't this nice? So many people in this room who are not Christians are going to become one today. I thought that was really good. But there was something strange happening. I, I, I was feeling a force around me pulling me out of my seat. And I was like, what is that? What's going on? He's asking for new Christians. I am a Christian. I've been going to church my whole life. I've been baptized. I've been confirmed. I've checked the boxes. 
So I cross my arms. I don't know if you guys have ever done this when you're uncomfortable and you're like, okay. I kind of glued myself to my chair a little bit more. And it just kept pulling. And it kept pulling. And I am at one end of the, uh, the Silver Dome, so kind of behind where a goalpost would be. And the stage was set up on the other side. So I can really barely see the individual who's speaking, but they've got big monitors. And at one point in time, he stops, and he looks right into the monitor, which then looked directly into my eyes. And he said, brothers who are out there, who've been to church, who've sang the songs, who've gone to Bible classes, but who haven't taken that final step to fully commit yourself to Jesus, to let God take over your life, do so now. And I stood up. Now the guys that I'm with are looking at me like, what's he doing? He's a Christian, right? He's gone to church his whole life. And I got up and I left my seat and I walked down onto the floor of the silver dome. My knees buckled. I had brothers in Christ put their hands on my shoulder as I fully committed to Jesus, as I went all in. Okay, so now I'm all in. Did it change me? It did. And that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you today. Well, how, Brad? How did it change you? Did you go to church more? No, I didn't go to church more. But similar to Paul, I saw things differently when I became fully committed to Christ. I had an incredible hunger and thirst for this, the Holy Bible, the Word of God, which up until that point, my exposure to the Bible was what we just did here today. We read a couple of verses. She read a couple more verses. I read a couple of verses. Maybe I'd go up to children's church and I'd hear a little bit about Abraham and the covenant that he made with God or the story about, um, of David and throwing a stone and hitting Goliath or an ark. I heard all those stories, but I, I didn't read them. I didn't, I didn't eat and drink them. And so after I became fully committed and all in, I got into this. I got into this a lot. I really started driving my pastor crazy. I wondered if, if Jerry was going to be here today because um, his wife Susan was the pastor of our church when I came back, and I think she got sick and tired of me. I'm like, what's the Trinity mean? What does this mean? How can there be three at the same time? <laughs> and Because of things I'd heard my whole life, I now wanted to know more about them. And I wanted it to be part of my life. So much so that I began to think maybe I'm supposed to go into ministry. M maybe I'm supposed to be a minister. Maybe that's what God's calling me to do. Well, I hadn't gone to seminary yet. I hadn't looked up seminary yet. And one day, when I was at my office here in Muskegon Heights, uh, it was about 5.30 at night, which meant nobody was there in the front office. They all checked out at 5. But I had an individual who worked in the warehouse come up into the office and specifically looking for me. Um, knocked on my office door. It was open, but he was polite. And he said, hey, Brad, you got a couple minutes? And I said, yeah, come on in, sit down. And he sat down and he said, Brad, I, I got some problems. I said, okay. He goes, you're a Christian, right? This time I could say yes. So I said, yes, I am a Christian. What's going on? And so he shared with me the problems that he had in life. And this is a problem that many have had. Um, he and his wife were struggling. Um, they were having some issues that were difficult to deal with. And he finally says, so Brad, you're a Christian. What should I do? I said, I, don't, I, I can't tell you what to do. I don't know what to do. He goes, well, what am I going to do? I said, well, I, I know where you can look. And I reached behind me on the shelf in my office, and I had my Bible. And I opened it up to about the middle. Anybody know what's in the middle of the Bible? 
the Psalms and Proverbs, right? And we read a couple of Psalms, and we read a couple of Proverbs, and he got a little bit clearer idea of what he should do, and he thanked me. That was it. And at that moment, I said to myself, I think I know where I'm supposed to be a minister. It's not as a full-time pastor in a church, because once you commit yourself to Christ, we're all ministers in the world that we live in. And for me, it was to be a minister in the business world, in the workplace. And today, I have taken over um, my company from my father and uh, 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 bought another company in town and currently have 160 employees. So that's 160 families that look to me to be a Christian leader, to be someone who is not just in it for themselves. And that's where I have found myself in my place in, in ministry. Um, the, the scriptures that we read today were, were on purpose. Uh, as you go back and you look at a couple of them, when we looked at Deuteronomy, uh, Moses said to Joshua, the Lord goes before you he will be with you and will not fail you or forsake you. In Philippians, we talk about rejoicing. Always rejoice. And the God of peace will be with you. And then finally in Colossians, have the gratitude of our heart to sing praises and hymns and psalms to our God. Did it change me? It did. As a Christian, I know someday I will be in heaven. And I don't know exactly what that means. That's okay. I don't need to know exactly what that means. I trust in God for that. But because of going all in, because of, similar to Paul, having scales fall away from my eyes and seeing things different, I experience heaven on earth every day. I see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit in people every day. I see the angels of humankind helping others every day because of that commitment that I made. So, excuse me, I'm dropping things. Twenty-five years I spent as a Christian. It's okay. I, I can say that I was a Christian. I, I went to church. I understood it a little. But when I finally went all in, um, it's been a fantastic 30 years since then. And I know that I'm not promised tomorrow. I'm promised today. And I want to share that love and light of God with everyone I come into contact with. I'm not perfect. I still get frustrated when that driver's in front of me going 26 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour zone. I'm not going to lie. It bothers me a little bit. But I know that God goes before me, that God is with me, and God will not forsake me. Thank you for listening. Amen. God calls us to be in ministry to those who need him. That we as Christians are committed. That God calls us to be committed to those who don't know Jesus. And committed to those who do to be there for love and support. This time, Mark, would you collect the prayer requests, please? I've been answering your prayer requests lately. That's uh, kept us on our knees, has it not? These are both for sharing. Prayers for patience, understanding, and guidance. I think we can all use this.
Amen? Amen. Also, prayers for thanks in all things, as you heard in the scripture today. And prayers for the family of Bob Jewell, who passed away this week. Had too many passings this week, last couple of weeks. With that, let us go to our Lord. Eternal God, in the stillness of this moment, in the quiet recesses of our hearts, and the inner reaches of our minds, inspire us with a vision of your kingdom. Grant that we may, with singleness of purpose and constancy of commitment, love you more deeply. You have heard our prayer request sent to heaven and also for Kay Anderson and her family as they suffer the loss of Tom. But Lord, what a glorious time we had here in this sanctuary for his celebration of life. And we pray for Pastor Robert as he returns to the church tomorrow that he is renewed and refreshed and restored. We pray for Jean Hammond as she prepares for Dick's service this Saturday. For Tom Baker, who had two emergency surgeries on Saturday, we lift him up and also Pat. And for the Hoffers, the tragedy has stuck, struck Dan's uncle and cousins in a house explosion. The uncle and one child is in the hospital struggling for life. And four of his cousins were killed. They were here visiting from another state. Oh God, you have heard all of our prayer requests aloud and silently in our hearts. You know everything already, but you welcome us to come into your presence as we pray. Lord of our lives, we are here today because we know that we need to be here, and we need you. You alone have the secret of life, its living, and its true significance. All of us have tried so many other things, but without the joys we think ought to be a part of life. The more we've surrounded ourselves with people, sometimes the more lonely we become. The more we have possessed, the more insecure we feel. The harder we have struggled and worked, the more we seem to miss out. Oh God, sometimes we place you as our last resort. Instead, we need to place you first in our lives and in everything we do. We need to empty ourselves so that you can fill us up with the power of the Holy Spirit so that our whole being is transformed and we see and we think and hope with different thoughts and attitudes. Teach us to love with your divine gift rather than for our own selfish purposes. We need the inner peace that comes from commitment and faith and trust and enable us to possess the gift of serenity that comes from hope in your presence and in your power. Thanks be to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for eternal life that dwells with each of us even now. And in the name of the one Jesus, amen. Holy Communion is a meal of bread and cup shared by the family of Christ, which we are. We are a family of Christ that opens us up to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and reminds us of our Lord's sacrifice and giving up his body and shedding his blood to show us the way to freedom and eternal life. It nourishes and sustains us as we seek to live as his faithful disciples. It is a celebration of our life together as the living body of Christ in and for the world. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. 
merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have failed to hear the cries of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now as we stand, if you are able to greet one another as a sign of God's peace and Christ's friendship by saying, Christ's peace be with you, and we respond with and also with you. We lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. And when we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through the prophets and the teachers. And in Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelled among us, full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Now hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please let the ushers know if you are unable to come forward this morning and you may be served where you are. This, my friends, is the Lord's table. 
He is the host, and we are the guests. You are all invited, whether or not you're a member of this church or another denomination or another church. Come and eat and be nourished, fed, and forgiven. Bring who you are right now, broken, healed, young, old, rich, poor, sinners and saints together in communion. Come find your place here where there are no strangers, only brothers and sisters in the sight of God. My two servers, please. Out of our love for Jesus and all that he's done for us, we give back a portion, just a portion, to the Lord for his work in the world. Would you please come? For the blessings of this offering, we thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just these financial gifts, but also our lives freely committed and offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. Now let's sing our closing hymn. And if you're all in, it takes on a different meaning. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Have every stir, I am the clay. Mild me and me. Search me and try me, Savior, today. Wash me just now, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, wounded and weary. Help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Teach me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. I think one of the coolest parts of being a Methodist is what we just got to do. Not every denomination, not every Christian church has an open table. Um, We do in the United Methodist Church, and that's just an awesome, awesome opportunity. A couple of years after I went all in, I I heard a song. It's, I believe it's in our hymnal, and it really, really spoke to me as to how I feel and how I want to share what has happened to me. So for all of you here, for those who are listening online and those who will be watching later, I'm going to attempt to barely sing the third verse. 
I don't have these people's voice, so bear with me. It goes like this. I wish for you, my friends, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the mountain top. I want my world to know the Lord I love has come to me. I want to pass it on. Thank you for joining me. If you're not all in, I encourage you to do it. You're going to love it. Go now in peace. Please share peace and the love and light that God has given us. Pass it on. Amen. You may be seated.